Welcome back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show right here in your hometown station, AM 1220, KHDS. And remember, our goal is always to guide you to personal and financial wealth. Well, thank you for joining us on the Don and Gino Show. That's right, no Gino today because we have two better guests. That's right. <laughs> I have actually my co-host today is one of our top mortgage professionals in our office. Super experienced, super cool guy. One of the most fun to work with. I love this guy, and he knows his stuff. He is a true mortgage professional. Cares about his clients, <laughs> and he's. My co-host today, Mr. Edgar oh. Ibarra. Nice to <laughs> see, see you, buddy. You in uh, your production studio. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he, see, he worries about loans. He doesn't do this <laughs> movie stuff and everything. So I asked Edgar, I go, well, you know, can you find, you know, one of your top real estate professionals that can help us really know what's happening in, in the real estate market today, especially in the Yellow Valley? Because there's ever-changing markets. Every market in the real estate community is... Uh, Basically, it depends on what pocket you're in because, believe it or not, Santa Cruz is completely different than Aloe Valley. And you have to know that right. pocket. And the, the beautiful thing is, is we have the two top professionals in the Aloe Valley. Of course, they work everywhere in California. They know their stuff. they got years and years of experience. But right now, we're going to focus on the Aloe Valley because it has been changing. So we brought <coughs> Jose Savala. He's actually uh, the manager and broker of... Uh, in Taro, out in Palmdale, I've seen him work. I've seen him speak to his team. I've seen his expertise, and I'm glad, Jose, you're here today. Yes, thank you for having me. Hey, appreciate thanks that. Thanks for joining us, yes, buddy. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so why don't we start with everybody always wants to know what's really happening in the market because most of the media, and Gene and I have been part of the media now for eight and a half years, is usually light years behind. By the time you get the reports, or the reports don't really tell the whole story, or the media spins the stories to scare the heck out of you, and you don't get the true um, value of what's happening in that, that pocket. So Gino and I, like <laughs> Edgar, we watch everything in the markets, but I know Jose does, because I've seen him at his meetings talking about what's happening with the inventory, talking about what's happening in the market, talking about what's happening in sell prices and list prices, and how to move product, and helping his team. So fortunately, we have Jose here today to talk about what's happening in Alo Valley. You guys were saying that there's been some changes going on, right? There has, you know, I think the last the last two years have been uh, pretty significant changes in what's been going on. Uh, I think uh, you guys would agree that we were in a, a more of a seller's market uh, for a very long mm -hmm. time. And uh, if something sold, it sold very quickly and it sold probably for 10, you know, up to $20,000 more. Uh, things are changing now. Uh, it's becoming what, what we're calling a normal market. First time in two decades. First time in a long time. So there's a lot of a lot of agents that have never seen a normal market. That's true. First of, first of all, they haven't right. seen a normal market, and so they don't know exactly. Uh, they may not have the right skill set uh, to ask the appropriate questions to our buyer base. Uh, so yeah, it presents challenges uh, from and an agent standpoint and from even from a buyer standpoint as well. Well, what, and we've been seeing that, and, and Gino and I have been talking about the change in the last, I don't know, let's say the last, especially the last six to eight months, yeah. to where it's become more of a normal market, which people don't understand that. But we think it's good for both sides for once, because it's not just a buyer's market, it's not just a seller's market, because just the seller's market is in the upper hand, and, and the buyers are getting frustrated. This right. is, were your buyers getting frustrated at that time? This I know is, you this were. This is when the agent skills do come up, and especially when you're negotiating with a seller where an appraisal comes in a little short, all of a sudden the, the listing agent freezes and doesn't know how to approach the seller about lowering their price or making adjustments or renegotiating with the buyer's agent. So or looking at other options. Yeah, I mean you the, look at different maybe financing and, options. And, and that's the thing, that's where we come in. We want to make sure that we give enough information for all parties and we understand the market a little more than most. So we tend to be able to be a lot, <laughs> little more vocal and obviously a little more aggressive to make sure that things get done rather than have the house go back out on the market and the same thing happen again with right. somebody else. Well, what I love about I, what you're, I, I don't even think it's being aggressive. It's actually giving advice. You, I mean, you guys are consultants. That's what the, you get paid yeah. to do is actually consult on what you think the market's doing, what options they have, how to uh, navigate and try changes in the market, how to navigate maybe low appraisal, how to navigate negotiating with the buyers or sellers, yeah. you know, getting, selling it for the right price or buying it for the right price, 
I, that's what's nice is about your exp experience together that you guys can help your clients. Wouldn't you think so? Absolutely. I, I think uh, at the end of the day, our clients need a, a leader, a leader to guide them, to give them the advice, to give them the suggestions. Um, and, and I try to teach that and have, have the agents that work with me uh, implement that into their, into their everyday selling. Yeah. I agree. Well, because information is easy now. Information is out there. We all can look at, get on whatever site. I'm not even going to say names. Right. You can get on yours with Intero, but you can get on, you know, let's just throw it out there, Zillow's or whatever it is. Yeah. You can find the information. You can find the home of your dreams. But one thing is a seller may think they know what to sell their home for based on what the neighbors sold, but they don't know what the improvements are. They don't know the difference in square footage or why that home sold for what it is. Therefore, if they overprice their home, when you say that that's probably the worst thing they can do is overprice their home? Because they're going to lose all the eyes that potentially can potentially buy that home. Oh, right? absolutely. I, uh, the two biggest factors that, that buyers are looking at right now when purchasing are price and condition. Right. And if it's turnkey and price well, it'll sell fast. Yeah. Uh, normal market, buyer's market, or seller, it'll, it'll, sell, it'll sell fast. But, it, but I, I think the misconception is now that sellers still have that, uh, that idea that I can still sell for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, because last year their neighbor sold for that much more, so it, it's an education thing. It's an ongoing education that we need to have. That we need to. So do. that change. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying the, that's the prices have been kind of driven upwards for those properties that are in better condition, mm -hmm. and obviously when you have, I, I'm not sure that there's a lot, a lot of flipping going on down down here, but a lot of properties are being flipped over there, which means that the investor buys it, reconditions it, and resells it. Right. But then. These are homes that are completely remodeled, and they're selling at the same price that sometimes a home that is not remodeled. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is going to be able to sell their house faster? Mm -hmm. This guy that's smart enough about making sure they invested in the property, or this guy that got overpromised by their agent, hey, I'm going to sell my house the same price as this because this one's going to sell for that, so mine should sell for the same amount. Uh, I and, totally agree. I mean, that's what's nice is that you guys are experienced enough. Well, experience is a nice thing because you guys have the confidence to actually... One, you can tell them, no, this is probably the best option. I know the bank told you this or the yeah. bank told you that or credit union told you this. But realistically, have you looked into this option? Have you, do you know that their mortgage insurance may be more expensive even though their rate may be lower? You can tell them that, just so you know, that house, even though it's been flipped, the quality of that flip versus this quality of this flip or the quality of these upgrades because they're done for the homeowner, not for an investor, right. is different. You can actually inform them of that Correct. and the pitfalls versus... Looking at pictures, you can get very excited. I mean, I'm sure, I bet you have a, a buyers that go, look how pretty this is. And you're like, be careful, right? Yeah, yeah. Pictures, uh, pictures will, will sell you to get there, but mm -hmm. being there, obviously, it, it's a whole other experience, for sure. Well, they call it a pig with uh, lipstick? It, it, you know, <laughs> I mean, Gino is funny, because we've been in the industry like, like you guys. I guarantee you can do just like we do. We walk in a place, it's a flip. Mm -hmm. You can tell that yeah. the quality is not there. It just looks pretty. But down the road, they're just going to have problems with the tile or the flooring or the, the, the cheap appliances they put in the, or the cheap plumbing they put in right. or whatever. Those are things to watch out for. Now, for some, that may work because the price is right. Correct. They're like, hey, it looks good. I'm good with it. I'm in a home I like. I don't want to do the improvements myself. So in some people, but you're going to make sure you negotiate based on the quality, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So between, so you say now it's a, it's a normal market. So what I like is you can help both sides. Like you said, you, they need more negotiating power before because now I feel it's opportunities. We had a seller's market because we had pent up demand for 10 years. So a pig with lipstick could sell yeah. for 10% more than maybe the neighbor because there are so many people just waiting. Plus the prices were so low at that time, mm -hmm. you know, because they went down to almost 50% of what they were. Now they're back up to where they were basically back in 2003 or whatever, uh, or maybe even higher than they were in the past, now it has to be negotiated. The expectations are a lot higher because the price of the house is obviously greater. So, I mean, that's one of the things that we look at is when the market is driven up, uh, people tend to be a lot pickier, like you mentioned, that now they want the, the best price at the best quality, but something, sometimes something's got to give. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to you know, navigate towards to that uh, uh, the, to explain to the clients the differences between having quality and price because at the end of the day you can't have both sometimes. No, and, and well, and you guys are a great team because there's two things. Because information, and we deal with this so much, we see how many files go through our office. 
uh, as you do. As a manager, you help a lot of your, your team, so you get to have eyes on a lot of what's going on. Uh, you can also navigate through uh, potential pitfalls before someone else even mm -hmm. sees them, because it's not even just your own transactions, it's how many. Like Edgar does more transactions than anyone in our office, he gets his hands on more opportunity to go, whew, seen that, been there, yeah. Here's, yeah. here's how to fix that. Absolutely. And you probably, Absolutely. I'm sure, the same, because you have your hands on not just your own transaction, but everybody's transactions. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, because him and I do, a lot of, do have a lot of conversations about this stuff. They will say, hey, man, did you hear about this? Oh, what's up with this? So we, we do talk a lot about that, which is funny, because um, we do see a lot of stuff that most people don't. But a lot of time, it's, it, it's helpful to hear other people like yourself telling me, hey, you know what, by the way, I just went through this situation. And I say, well, how'd you get over there? Oh, we did this, this, and this, and this. Not a lot of people know, know how to do that kind of stuff. And that's kind of the thing that we're talking about, like yourself. It, your office is successful because you can obviously figure out how, how to get things done. Mm -hmm. You put the right people in the right place to make sure that you have the right team in place to help you. Uh, absolutely, it's all about having the right team. You know, right. I, you know, the the reason I love working with Edgar so much is because he's systematic, just like I am. Mm -hmm. um, to be successful in this business, you want to. Time is something that you can never get back. So that's the biggest commodity you can lose. Uh, so time is of the essence for me, as it should be for everybody else. Mm -hmm. So the quicker I can get something into the pipeline. And not say set it and forget it, but for the most part, know that it's in good, capable hands that it'll that'll take care of it. My my uh, uh, my activities to lead, generate, and just bring more are just concentrated and focused on that versus me foc focusing on, on 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 getting one close. That's his job. I'm getting him in. He's closing him out. I love it. All right. So why don't we dive into how you are best helping buyers and sellers right now in this market? Because you said the market has changed. Mm -hmm. So before, like you said, there are some of your competitors which just say that at a time, if you put a house up and, and listed it, it was sold. You really didn't have to put the same thought process into what's really discovered the right price. Because if you discover the right price, the market would actually raise the potential uh, price of that home, correct? Correct, yeah. Meaning there'll be a bidding war for it because it's priced correctly. Correct. Um, am I right? If if you overprice the home, you'll probably use not, lose 90% of the eyes on that home. Oh, 100%. 100%. I think, uh, again, people have a misconception of, uh, of negotiating. They want to start high and end up somewhere lower, but they want to... Mm -hmm. There's a fear of wanting to lose or leave money at the table. Right. And it's really not money that they're losing. It's money that they, you know, it's just not there. It's uh, not there because the market yeah. dictates it. Exactly. Exactly. Right. You know, um, so one of the biggest things that, 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 that I do to prepare myself, whether I'm working with a seller or, or working with a buyer, and I teach this to my agents, is just asking the appropriate questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, getting the motivation as to why they want to sell the property or why they want to buy a property. That dictates everything else. I love that, that. that just dictate, it just goes from there. Yeah, but I think once you get the, their motive to action, their motivation of why they want to do something, uh, the reasons why they don't want to do it, uh, fear or, or, or whatever it may be, you, you just kind of bring back that motivation back to them and say, hey, you did want to live in, in West Palmdale to be in a safer neighborhood for your kids and be in a better school, right? And that's exactly why we need to get this done right now. So it's just a matter of, of learning the, the, the appropriate questions and always 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 tagging that motivation with it. All right, and then you're 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 no different though because I work with you all the time, Edgar. You ask a lot of a lot of different questions than most. Others just go, basically just send out a payment, but that's yeah. not always the best option, is it? No, obviously not because there's a lot of times <laughs> where people assume that the only option that they have, for example, is uh, like twenty percent down exactly for one. Twenty percent down on something, <laughs> but when you're selling a property, um, you have to also ask them based on where their personal financial situation is at the time is, well, you know, you have all this other debt in here. Did you mm -hmm. want to keep that still there and roll over all the funds? Or did you want me to give you an analysis on comparing what your out-of-pocket every month would be based on doing that or helping you pay off all this debt and get you into a good program where your payment is not going to be that much higher, but you're able to release yourself of 1500 bucks a month and other debt. And cash flow. And instead you of putting 20%, cash flow analysis. just put 10% down and help you make sure you save some money out of pocket so you can actually build a savings but account. But what about PMI, though? You I know, don't the, want PMI. The good yeah, news is that there's, there's <laughs> options on PMI now, and, and even if you, you do have PMI, PMI has changed so much where the companies are competing for your business, mm -hmm. so they're willing to give you PMI at lower rates 
And so instead of paying, you know, uh, you know, 300 bucks a month, like most people assume that that's how much BMI is, there's sometimes, depending on your down, even 10% down with good credit, you're paying 60 bucks a month. But wait a minute, my bank didn't give me PMI options. Yeah, well, that's because they assume that you're supposed to be like the ideal client to meet their expectations, but anybody can tell you that, that you can come in with 20% down and say, hey, there's your rate, but well, our job is to make sure that we put them in the right program so that maybe a couple of years from now, uh, they'll be a lot more financially stable and they won't have all that debt. Or, for example, they'll maybe refinance anyway in, in the near future or even sell again. So there's, you got to put them at the, the, them at the expectation that, that this is where we think that your best case scenario is. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they're going to make the decision. You just give them the programs and the options and they decide <coughs> on their own as well. Uh, all right. Edgar Barra, by the way, with Finance America. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? Well, it's, that's it's, what I'm saying. That's what I like. We, we only have two professionals that work absolutely. with our team. He knows our team, like yours, has a great support group. You can help them navigate anything, give them advice. I feel Gino and I and our team yeah. can support Edgar, who has tons and tons of experience already. I mean, he's the top of his team. He has his own sales team under him. But the two things, what I liked, I heard, Edgar, it was important because a lot of you will see, oh, I'm just going to go for the lowest rate that I see on the Internet, or I'm going to just walk into my bank. They'll know. Well, be careful. Most of the bank, uh, they don't have near the experience of an Edgar. But two, they're not going to ask the right questions like cash flow analysis. And like you said, maybe putting 10% down versus 20% down and paying off debt instead of putting it down could alleviate hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in cash flow position, put you in a better position. Or two, they may only have one option for, for mortgage insurance. And therefore, you don't have other options. Edgar's going to go through five different options. Plus, we have multiple mortgage insurance companies competing where a bank only uses one. We've had many times where, yeah. I mean, bottom line is the lowest rate is not always the best option. Sure. And that is key to find out because we have many times where the bank goes, oh, the bank's a quarter percent lower than you. But are they? When we compare the, the mortgage payment, which is most important, and the cash flow analysis, you're actually paying more. So be careful. So work with a, a great professional yep. at, like Edgar Ibarra. And then I, I love your experience. I mean, your confidence, your experience, your knowledge <coughs> is imperative in a market. Like you said, it's not just, I'm going to list my home. I'll get whatever I want for it because there's so many buyers out there. Or I'm just going to go buy a home because there are more options out there now. And then comparing the right home by asking the right questions. I mean, that sounds yeah, like it's I mean, very good. at his meetings. I mean, he, he goes through this whole spew of, uh, you know, <laughs> and find the right motivation on why you're actually selling because the last thing you want to mm -hmm. do is just go over there and sign a freaking contract and all of a sudden those people say, you know what, I don't want to sell anymore. But if you already instilled in the reasons why they want to sell like he does, then there is no reason why you ever have to worry about them not wanting to sell and buy something else because you've already built that, that need and the want and they, you already showed them what the expectation is and what the, the next property is going to look like and all that good stuff. So there's no way they're going to ever tell you, you know what, you, you weren't there to support me. Right. You weren't there to coach me. I mean, yeah, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I took notes when I was at your meeting. I mean, you have great information. So why don't we, okay, we talked about the power of working with very experienced people like Edgar Ibarra and Ho Ho Jose Savalza? Savalza. Savalza. Yeah. That's close. <laughs> Savalza. Uh, with Intero. Uh, and, and how well you can help buyers and sellers navigate and asking the right questions. So let's do, uh, I love the next segment, why Intero and why you? If we can go in the next, no, we'll do a quick little segment after this. Um, but how can they get a hold of you, Jose? Uh, they can get a hold of me in various ways. Uh, my phone number, 661-878-2602. Uh, email is jose at josesavalza.com. Uh, <laughs> Savalza. <laughs> yeah. That's Z with, with Z's like zebra. See, I uh, mess it up on purpose that way they have to say, hey, see, that's how it's said. Now they're paying attention to yeah, Savalza. Exactly. You know, if, I, if I, I tell people this all the time, if I were to get a penny anytime someone said Savala or something else, I, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'd, be set. I, I'd be set. I'd be set. I'd be set. Or uh, Facebook, uh, just look me up, josesavalza.com, uh, or Instagram, josesavalza1. All right, you, yeah. Edgar, how are they going to be able to use you? Uh, easiest. Cell phone, man, 818-359-2723. And uh, my email is eibarra at financeofamerica.com. All right, two professionals. All right, stay tuned. We're going to talk about Intero and working with Jose and why that might be a great option for you as a real estate professional. But thank you for being part of the Don and Gino Show. Remember, you can always find out more and see this video because we'll have this on video for you at donandgino.com. We'll be right back. Good job, man.